Let's talk about wisdom. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to today's podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, we're going to dive deeply into the idea of wisdom using Uncle Iroh. But before we jump in, let's go ahead and reference the tea we're having today, which is the organic red clover tea. I've had it before. This is the one from my High Priestess box. I'm not currently sponsored in this video. I just really like their teas. It is delicious as per usual. Okay, what does it mean to dive deeply into wisdom? To be honest, we're probably just going to scratch the surface, but I want to encourage you to dive deeply as you're pondering the surface level version of wisdom, which I'm going to explore using Uncle Iroh. So you guys know I love Avatar. You guys know my family and I usually watch it like once a year together. It's a very big uh, or useful tool to discuss philosophy and uh, bubbles. Like the the show The Avatar is, uh, Avatar The Last Airbender is the greatest exploration into bubbles. I actually have some versions of exploring the levels uh, through Avatar. So if you guys want to check that out, I'll link it down below. But I was thinking about this because in my VC and my Discord, PS Sign Up, it's through Patreon. It's tons of fun and it helps fund my work. We, ever, we are discussing wisdom because of of John Verveke. So Verveke has a series called The Meaning Crisis, and we're basically at the end of it, and we've been exploring it together as a group, and it's been really fun hearing everyone just discuss ideas using Verveke. He is the tool we're using to discuss wisdom. The, the wise person is overcoming egocentrism, internalizing the sage. The, the, the traditions point to this very clearly, and they point towards uh, um, Sofrason, the most excellent way. And a couple weeks ago, we discussed um, wisdom because he himself has said that he doesn't see himself as a wise person. And I agree that I don't see myself as a wise human, but I see myself as a person on a journey into wisdom uh, with the hopes of taking the small moments of wisdom that I do have and transforming myself into a wise person. Now, in the VC, we had lots of discussions about what was wise. We heard a lot of different people express their versions of it. Um, some people being very practical, I think, with their exam examples of wisdom, like being a good parent, having the wisdom to take care of a child, having the wisdom to drive well. I think these are all great examples of moments of wisdom, but I don't think they quite encapsulate what I want to encourage you to think of wisdom as, which is an all sort of, you know, encompassing, <laughs> you know, a version of a human being in which wisdom is from head to toe and not just moments of time. So when you're exploring wisdom, you can use fictional characters because I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever met a person that I consider a wise person. I met a lot of people with lots of wisdom, but that's not the same thing. The thing that I am aspiring to be is sort of the version of Uncle Iroh, but not the one in Avatar The Last Airbender. See, throughout Avatar The Last Airbender, Uncle Iroh is the wisdomous <laughs> character. He's the person that people go to, the guide, but also he himself is struggling. He himself does not hold enough wisdom uh, to avoid the conflicts of his existence. As an example, uh, throughout the series, he has moments with his nephew Zuko. And we've seen with Uncle Iroh, like, how many versions of Zuko he has had to know and learn. But with Iroh, we only get so many versions of him. I would argue that until the Fire Nation arc in which we are getting ready for the war, basically, we see Iroh as the lovable, carefree, um, humorous uncle that's just fun to be around who gives us very many, you know, you know, drops of wisdom. You remember when Zuko literally is lost? He doesn't have Uncle Iroh with him. And he goes, what would Uncle Iroh say right here? And he's like, yes, Zuko. And he's like pretending to be Iroh. We do that in our own lives. We look to the people that we think are wise and then we think, what would they do? WWJD for all my Christian kids. What would Jesus do? Only in this case, it'd be like WW Uncle Iroh do. <laughs> what would Uncle Iroh do? And in this circumstance, I think he would struggle. And Avatar The Last Airbender, he does not have enough wisdom to avoid the conflict he has with his nephew Zuko. There's too much. And at this point in his journey, we're seeing him a mourning father who mourns the death of his son, a mourning uncle who mourns the um, sort of not death of his nephew, but the sort of spiritual death of his nephew, who it seems so in conflict. He's not sure where he'll end up, but he knows, Uncle Iroh knows, that his life is heading in a very specific direction. He knows he has to train. He knows he has to lie. He knows he has to, or at least not lie, maybe even omit 
information to his nephew who comes to see him throughout his jail sentence to sort of seek an understanding from him. Tell me what to do. Even though he goes back to the Fire Nation after Iroh makes it clear that's not the answer, Iroh, well imprisoned, gives him nothing. So he doesn't quite lie to Zuko, right? But he doesn't help him either. And then in front of the other guards of the Fire Nation, pretends he's basically a sickly man, except in front of one single guard. He has the wisdom to warn her, you might want to leave today because something's going to go down. And he did that out of kindness and also out of knowing that she herself was not like the others and that she herself, even though Fire Nation, even though in that bubble, deserved to have an option to be someone different. Wisdom is something that comes in moments, but I think there is this fantasy version or maybe an attainable version of a person in which wisdom is from head to toe. And I think that that person is the person I'm striving to be, which is why I think I will die unwise. That doesn't mean I'll die without wisdom. I will die without being, I think, a wise person, but since I'm on the journey of seeking that maybe fantasy character of wisdom, I know I will gain so many more tools because I'm at least acknowledging that there's a journey associated with wisdom. Sometimes the wisdom is knowing that the journey is just existence, like living out your life. And sometimes the journey is to be introspective with the tools given to you. If you move throughout your life, saving your kid's life every time it decides to eat a toy, right? You might have the wisdom to be a good parent, but does that really move beyond the scope of keeping your child alive? If it doesn't, I would say you're not a wise person. You just have the wisdom to keep your child alive. I think it should add to your life and continue past just the moment in time in which you require wisdom. As an example, I know myself that I'm not a wise person because during my whole lupus diagnosis, I've been a mess. I have not been able to logic my way through this process. I have not been able to meditate myself through this diagnosis. I have not been able to, you know, sort of pull from the heavens this wisdom to help me handle this thing in a much more calm and collected and maybe wisdomous way, right? I instead am am I'm, 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 I'm like everybody else. I'm struggling. I'm not doing well. It's kind of up and down. It's apparently good, according to my nutritionists and doctors, but also just a part of the process of yo-yoing. It's not linear, this success, right? I had a meeting with my nutritionist yesterday, and she shared something with me that really just, it helped so much. And it's so funny how we really need other people who've been there to kind of help us, which is why I know I'm still seeking out teachers. I'm still seeking out wisdom. Uh, Just a caveat, just a side note. Remember that the levels one through five, five is not the end of your introspection journey. It's the beginning part. It's the first boss, but it's 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 very hard and it's not for everyone and most people won't engage with that because again you'd have to leave your bubbles in order to engage with the idea that maybe we don't know what we're doing here right but once you figure that out well what's next well for me it's the wisdom journey it's to continue that journey into wisdom now that i have a good foundation of introspection um now it's about wisdom and i again would love to have an all encompassing wisdom and i don't know if this is a real thing i've never met somebody who fit this requirement, but I've seen it in fiction. Before I jump back into Uncle Iroh, my nutritionist gave me a tool that I thought was really interesting and I want to share with you guys today. She gave me a tool about the change cycle and she said, Brittany, do you know what the change cycle, like, do you know the operations of the change cycle? And I was like, no, I I don't. I don't think so. So she said it's pre-contemplation, contemplation to awareness, planning phase, action phase, back to planning phase, uh, planning and action phase, maintenance, daily maintenance, and then relapse. And that was so, that was just the piece of wisdom I needed in that moment, right? In that moment, I'm panicking. I'm freaking out. My body is dying on me. I don't know what's happening, even though I understand it's a diagnosis. I understand I have lupus. I understand, I understand, I understand. I'm not logicking logicking my way out of it because I'm not linear getting better. And she told me, it's not linear, Brittany. It's It's a cycle, but also relapse is a part of the growth. If you think you're going to be perfect from day one, okay, I got it. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to work out five days a week. This is what I'm doing. And you think you're not going to have a day where you want to relapse back into junk food? Like you're not being honest with yourself about the human condition. And the human condition, I think, takes wisdom to understand in its full capacity, which I know I don't have because I'm still questioning, right? So the joy I get out of life is always being a student and of course giving my information and wisdom to other people, but the wisdom that I'm offering is slices of information from moments in your life. They're not all-encompassing wisdom. It's not all-encompassing wisdom, which is why I appreciate when Verveke says like, I'm not a wise person yet. When I meet people who are on the same journey of wisdom that I am, I appreciate that journey because that's what I'm seeking from existence before I 
I die, existing before I die. Versus other people, maybe they feel like they're already a wise person, right? That's great, but then we're not talking about the same thing because I've never met a person who encompassed the wisdom I'm seeking. And I think it's the preemptive wisdom maybe or wisdom to know that it's okay that you're going through a human moment. I don't even have that. I'm not very compassionate towards myself right now. I'm pretty hard on myself right now. And uh, a lot of it is because that I, I'm sick and so I'm not I'm not meeting my goals the same way that I'd like to, even though I'm meeting them just fine. It's just a little slower. And patience is something that I'm definitely going to meditate on for the next 50 years. I wasn't born with patience. It's not one of my virtues. And so I need the wisdom to be more patient to help me through my diagnosis. And that this diagnosis itself is the universe giving me an opportunity to earn wisdom. See, I think it, wisdom needs to be earned. Going back to Iroh, Uncle Iroh earns his wisdom by making hard decisions. Now, throughout the series of Avatar, we meet a lot of people that are wise and struggle. The White Lotus as a group in general are the perfect examples of people that you could say are fives and still struggle because they're human, but they're all seeking out wisdom. Think of Sokka's sword teacher, right? He's still a human. He's definitely what I would say is like good five energy, right? He's not worried about the bubbles. He's willing to teach Sokka even though he's water. He's willing to go to war but still not want to be in the war. There's always these beautiful elements throughout the series of very wise people who are also very human. Think about Boomy when Avatar sees Boomy for the first time again. And he's like, oh my gosh, it's like my friend. And his friend seems like he doesn't have wisdom, but obviously has the wisdom unknown to everyone around him until like the end of that episode, right? Where he pretends to basically be crazy as if he doesn't know what he's doing. And yet Boomy is a person and not always perfect. Not that wisdom makes you perfect, but I think wisdom helps you reach a state of existence or existing that allows you to interact with existence in a very particular way. So again, I'm not seeking perfection, but I am seeking depth. To be deep, to have a deep relationship with something is also to sacrifice, in my opinion. So throughout the series, um, Iroh has these moments where he gives advice to Toph, he gives advice to Zuko, he gives advice to Aang, he gives advice to so many people throughout the series. But most of the time, he's really gaining tools to give advice to himself and wisdom to himself. So throughout the series, you see him struggle, yell, get frustrated, cry. And then towards the end of the series, you see him feel um, at peace with his choices. I think they ask him uh, before he goes to war with the Fire Nation, he says, like, what are you going to do after the war? And he goes, I'm going to, like, get good at Pai Show. He writes something about Pai Show. And it's like, yeah, he's going to do the game. He's going to play a game. He's basically saying, after this, I'm going to play Minecraft. And everyone just goes, "Ah, okay. He's going to play chess. He's going to get get he's going to get better at a game." And you're thinking to yourself like, "What's so important about a game?" Nothing, but the simplicity of life is also wisdom. Right? Knowing that the simplicity of life is also good is wisdom. Now, it's not fulfilling. Technically, Iroh's story doesn't end there. If you continue the series into Korra, which I know, a lot of controversy, not everyone's very happy with the series. I actually really like the last 3 seasons. First season was okay, but wasn't what I exactly wanted from the show. But the last three seasons were really good. And in particular, we meet Uncle Iroh in the spirit world. And we find out that he left his body on Earth and abandoned his life pre his death, from my understanding of the story, to end up in the spirit world. His next stage of enlightenment, his seeking of wisdom. Now, this is how I view it. You can view it differently. It's just a tool. These TV shows are not our Bibles. They're tools to give us a better understanding of our existence and our existing. So in the spirit world, he meets Cora, and Cora is going through these great moments of being an adolescent to being an adult to struggling with her own idea of like loyalty and value and what is wise. And Cora, not a wise per person, is still the avatar. And so that must be very scary, right? To be the avatar and not have the wisdom to know what to do in the spirit world where she meets Iroh, she's like at this dinner table and she's like evoking a lot of negative energy, which twists the spirits into being almost like the twisted versions of themselves. And Iroh warns her, your energy is going to impact these spirits. And instead of being joyous and happy, you're going to turn them into their worst versions as well. And we do that. We allow our negative energy to spill onto other people. And we don't even realize we're doing it because we we just think like, well, it's my right. It's how I feel. It's how I want to be. Yes, you can be that, especially isolated. You do you. But when you start impacting other people, you might want to start thinking of harm reduction and you might want to be more considerate and thoughtful, i.e. evoking wisdom to allow you to be better, not just to yourself, but to the people around you. Now, I'm not saying a wise person is morally going to head in a specific direction. I actually think that it's sort of 
of neutral, which Iroh exhibits as a character. He'll have moments where he's interacting with bad people. But what does Iroh do? Instead of, again, moralizing the situation in a particular direction, he neutrally interacts with people and allows them to give themselves an opportunity to be treated with more kindness than not. And he, because he's wise in moments, allows himself an opportunity to be patient with these people to reevaluate how he wants to interact with them. It's not perfect. It's not black and white. There definitely are moments in which Iroh doesn't give people an opportunity to evoke wisdom, nor is he in a a wisdom moment himself. So he's just in a living my life moment, you know, defending himself against the Fire Nation, maybe running away from bandits, you know, X, Y, and Z, whatever it is. There are moments in this show that show Iroh being very much a human, not sure what to do, confused as the rest of us. And yet he's considered one of the wise characters of the show, as are many of them, right? The White Lotus, again, being one of my favorite examples as a group, a wise group, as a group, still not wise individuals in the same way that I'm seeking in my life. Now, Iroh exhibits wisdom in the spirit uh, spirit world in a very particular way, and I think it's really, really telling. But in particular, the thing that stood out to me the most was when Korra came back to the real world and talked to Zuko, who's an adult now, or an old man, and says to him, um, yeah, I saw your uncle. And he's like, you saw my uncle? In the spirit world. Even Zuko had no idea that his uncle was just chilling in the spirit world as, as, as a spirit, right? He had left his body and died on Earth, and went to be in the spirit world. He continued his existence in a different way for a different journey. He had the wisdom to know not to put this burden of knowledge onto Zuko, but Korra didn't. And Korra, maybe just out of her own joy of seeing somebody he knew, wanted to tell him. And I wonder how that plays into Zuko's mind. I wonder if he's upset with Uncle Iroh for doing that to him, if he's upset that he went into the spirit world, if he's upset that he continued a journey without him. So much of what we think is wisdom might look like isolation to some extent, and I think it is, because I think there's this idea, which is unwise, that if we miss one news story, if we miss one Tumblr post, if we miss one tweet, we're not going to know what's happening in the world. I think you could disappear for 20 years and come back and you would still be faced with a very same, like similar world if you look at just the humans. If you're looking at what the trends are or what the technology is, well, of course it's not going to be the same. But if you just look at the humans, eh, it's pretty much the same. Like it's different, but it's the same, you know, depending on where you are in the world, what bubble. It's basically the same. Uh, Recently, my partner and I have been watching Hunter x Hunter, and I'm obsessed. It's so good. And we're at this moment where we see one of the wisest characters being portrayed um, as uh, his younger self. Like, we see a flashback, not portrayed. We see a a flashback. And we get to see his version of wisdom and how he earned it. And a big part of it is isolation. You know, he throws uh, 10,000 punches a day type thing. And in a field of flowers in nature with no other humans for two years until he sees um, a difference in his 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 action. His idea being that he wants to be grateful and show gratitude. And I think gratitude is a part of wisdom. Wisdom is a part of gratitude. And through that process, after two years, sees a difference in how he punches, which I know doesn't make sense. You should watch the show. I don't want to give away too many spoilers, even though it's a very old show. But the idea is that I see a few things that stand out to me, isolation being one of them, coming back into the world after. So he's a gentleman who is of the world, leaves the world, comes back to the world. I think that is very telling. I think it's very telling that we can do these things. I've done these things in small spurts. I want to do them in longer ones. Like I really want to do maybe a month away, maybe a year away. There, and I mean complete isolation, like no online activity. You know, I'm not there. Maybe I pre-record. Maybe somebody else runs my channel for a year. But if I am such a slave to my YouTube channel that I can't disappear for a year from the world, I've made a mistake. I have not been wise in utilizing my choices and I haven't been efficient. So, so much for my desires in life is to get to the point where I can isolate from the world because this is my one life and I'll die. And who's to say that that wouldn't be a a good way to spend your existence, right? It's just a year of your time. Sounds insane. Everyone's thinking, a year of my time? How will I ever get into the right law school? Be the right kind of doctor? Shake the right kind of hands? I just don't value these things and they're not things that matter to me. But I think it'd make a hell of a podcast if I came back and I said, one year of being isolated from the world. That would be a fun documentary, right? My work isn't about getting things right now. My work isn't predicated on like getting, talking about trending topics today. My work isn't predicated on anything more than actually observing and sharing moments of wisdom. My work, I would argue, is best suited for people who are not in a rush to solve their lives, but are enjoying the journey 
or are in crisis about the journey because they haven't yet learned to enjoy it. And don't get me wrong, I get stressed as much as the next person. And I, like I said, my lupus diagnosis has been a great example of a challenge the universe has given me to earn wisdom. But I know I haven't earned it yet because I am not enjoying this journey as much as I think I should be. Um, funny enough, I think I, I don't know. I don't, it's very hard to enjoy a journey that you are, I really wouldn't, I, I, I don't know why I, in my head, I'm like, man, I wish I had lost a leg. Like losing a leg sounds like a much more interesting journey than just being chronically sick and ill and not being able to function every day and not being able to eat what I want. At least if I lost a leg, I could eat whatever I wanted and I wouldn't be tired because I lost a leg, right? But in my head, I've got this other thing that's going to be a chronic issue for my life in which I'll probably be tired to some extent or at least restricted down to a diet that will help me be less tired but will still be weird because I'm going to have to, like my nutritionist said, you didn't choose to get lupus, but you have to choose how you react to it. Yes, same advice I give to my callers. And yet my brain is so upset that I'm even put in this position because I do not have the wisdom to make peace with it yet. So right now I am earning the wisdom to be at peace with my diagnosis. And I am very grateful for it. Even though I do not think it is a gift. But I am grateful for life being as hard as it is because I know that means I'm just living a normal life. Like I have enough wisdom to know life is hard no matter how established you are in the world, no matter how much money I make, no matter how X, Y, and Z good things happen. Life itself is hard no matter who you are. And this is a good example of it, right? Uh, Before I got my lupus diagnosis, I was like a month ahead on bills. I was like paying everything. I had $10,000 in savings. Uh, We're back to like square one of finances, but also we're actually on the second part of my journey of introspection, which is wisdom. So I did the levels. I did this whole introspective journey. I popped all my bubbles. I did really great work. And I was like, amazing. And that was step one. Now I've built this really great foundation for myself. And now step two is how do I, how do I evoke wisdom in moments in which life is hard in an unpredictable manner or in a way that I didn't consider? Genuinely, I mean this in the most real way. I meditated and pondered on every situation I could think of, specifically cancer, specifically dying early, specifically losing limbs, specifically all these things. I'm like, I can handle all of this. Lupus, for some reason, was like, I didn't I didn't even know. I don't think I know anyone with an autoimmune disorder. So I didn't think of it as a thing I had to think about. And so I didn't. And now the irony is that people who maybe lost a limb wish they have an autoimmune disorder. And because I have an autoimmune disorder I didn't prepare for, I almost wish I lost a limb because I prepared for that. I mentally prepared for that. I didn't prepare for an autoimmune disorder, disorder, which was my lack of wisdom that did not allow me to, I didn't have the tool to prepare in that particular way. But now, who now the game has changed. So now I'm in a different game. Okay, the first game was introspection. The second game is wisdom. And those things have to coincide. So I had to do the journey of introspection to be wise. And now I will go on the journey of wisdom, which could last from anywhere from one second to past death. And I probably will be one of those people that don't quite reach it before I die. But it's going to be a hell of a journey to attempt to reach it. And I'm excited about that. Uncle Iroh is a wise person. In moments. But I don't really think he becomes a truly wise person until he's in the spirit world, which is after death. Yeah. Okay. I think that's all I wanted to say. Thank you guys so much for watching today's podcast. I would love to hear your views on wisdom. Who do you think is a wise person? Do you have any example of them in media, um, in, 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 in celebrityism? Like I know growing up, Pope John Paul II was considered a very wise person or Mother Angelica from EWTN or Mother Teresa, all Catholic people, obviously. I grew up Catholic. And these people are all people who have controversy surrounding them to some extent, or maybe even people who think negatively of them. But I think they were all very good people who had interesting beliefs that forced them to treat people differently than I would treat people. And yet, similarly to how I would treat people as well, I would probably take their good points according to my values and disregard their bad points according to my values. But either way, I think all of us have that, which is why I'm not sure I've ever met a wise person from head to toe. Because even the people we worship, like Kidology said, um, like Mandela, right? Like, you know, we we put our people on a pedestal and then we realize like, oh, they're not great people all the way. Martin Luther King Jr., any of these people that we admire and love, like they're not perfect. And so I think that maybe wisdom 
is being okay with the fact that the people that we think are great are maybe not perfect, right? And so again, if you have examples of people that you think are wise humans from head to toe and you wanna share it in the comments, please do. Otherwise, I think we would all agree we all have moments of wisdom and I hope that we all as a collective, whatever that means, expand on that wisdom as we age. You don't have to. You're under no moral obligation to seek wisdom. But for Brittany, get ready. That's going to be the journey for the next 100 years. All right. I'll talk to you guys soon. Please leave your comments in the sections down below. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking. Yeah.